<clears throat> so as always, we bring the two Christian symbols to put on the casket of Ceylon uh, here today. Um, when he was baptised in this church, he was entrusted to the path of the Lord Jesus, and uh, we bring uh, the book of the Word of God. We cherish the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, he received the sign of the cross, a cross which expresses itself in our lives on the journey, facing the obstacles and the traumas of life. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Just like to welcome you all here to Mass in uh, Kilmesson on this sad occasion for Caelan Yor, and uh, we're conscious of all his family here. We think too of his dad, Liam, who died not that long ago. And of course, we welcome Billy and Emily Rose, um, his wife Anna, Mother Carmel, Brother Gavin, uh, and all the extended family here today. You're all very welcome as we come together to pray for our brother, um, Caelan. So now, so now the family uh, will bring maybe some little symbols, just not, I suppose, express, expressing all his life, but certainly giving us an insight into his journey. Leon carries a pool cue to symbolise Caelan's love of the game. He rarely missed a chance to pick up the pool cue and play a game on a night out. He even managed to convince Anna to give up a room in the house for a pool table to practice his craft. Over the years, he has been an active member of the Meath Pool League, travelling the county competing, and more recently holding the position of joint captain of the Bective Pool Team. Maraid carries a tractor and a small cow figurine. The tractor to represent his only little nephew, Isaac, who never missed an opportunity to watch, wave and shout to Caelan going by the house on the tractor. Gavin and Caelan planted a copper beech tree when Isaac was born, and it now grows tall and strong in our garden. The cow, that's because he loved cows. <laughs> Gabriel and John carry a Monaghan jersey and a Liverpool jersey. He spent his first years of life living in Monaghan, and even after taking up residence in Meath, as a young child, he stayed loyal to his mother's roots. Caelan was an avid Liverpool supporter, a love shared by several of his childhood friends. Given the chance, he would watch every game he could. Podrick and Gary carry Caelan's tools and a car, symbolizing his lifelong love of all things cars. He learned his trade as a mechanic in Newgate Land Rover and could put his hand to fixing anything with a motor. His father, Liam, used to bring Caelan and Gavin to rallies, and these early experiences influenced his love of cars. Sean and Maria carry photos. Photos of his cherished and adored children, Billy and Emily Rose, who brought so much joy and love to his life. He was a proud father, and no doubt considered them to be his greatest achievement in life. And so we welcome you once again here for this Mass for Caelan, sad in the loss of a loved one, but also anticipating the great mystery promised by the Lord himself, that we would share in eternal joy. We welcome those who've travelled from Monaghan, Carneros, and elsewhere. Let us pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faith will offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. We're seated now as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Hope is not deceptive because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit which has been given us. We were still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. 
It is not easy to die, even for a good man. Though, of course, for someone really worthy, a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained our reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> One of the scribes came up to Jesus and put a question to him. Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you must love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well spoken, Master, what you have said is true, that he is one and there is no other. <coughs> to love with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself, this is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to question him any more. The Gospel of the Lord. So, there are so many people here today and people outside and people on our webcam who have joined us uh, that we are together, I suppose, a strong force, you could say, in prayer uh, with Caelan's family and we came to celebrate the funeral mass of Caelan. Over the past week, you've been talking about Caelan and there are many stories and experiences shared, I'm sure. Some with smiles and wonderment and some with tears. It's the way of life. We remember the hilarious things that happen and the risks we take and the things we get up to. And at the same time, that's all imbued with a sense of sorrow and loss as we lose a loved one. We've just listened to the word of God and we can trust in God's promise. 
and his love of Caelan and all of us. The gospel we've just heard tells of the two great commandments, love God and love your neighbour. <coughs> and I'm sure over the past week, the family have felt this love of neighbour, inspired, we would hope, by a higher spiritual love of God, bringing us to recognise the need for support, the need for fellowship, encouragement and so on in a troubled time. The scribe in the Gospel had asked Jesus what were the most important commandments, what was the first of all the commandments. So we see that love is the center, com central command, caring for each other and having the personal desire to care for others is what Jesus is talking about. We live in a world torn apart by competition, by rivalry, by seeking power and so on. We can see it in Europe, we can see it in the US at this moment. Jesus calls us to a different kind of love. Caelan had a love for cars and a passion for his work as a mechanic. Over the past week, a number of people said to me that when they were quite shocked about the passing of Caelan, they said, he was so good to us when we called to get our cars repaired. Couldn't do enough to help us. And uh, for anybody who's brought a, a car to a garage, the one thing you like is trust. That you can trust that the work is done and it's done well. The person knows what he's doing. And so his life as a, work, as a worker in his uh, chosen journey as a mechanic, his craft uh, was very much appreciated. And as Carmel was telling me, he always had this in his heart, this work he wanted to do. He had a love for it, which was a great gift for him. Like all of us, he probably had his failings too. He was human, and being human, he was entitled to that. It's part of the human journey as well. But there's no doubting his love for his family, his wife, two children, and his friends. You can generally come to a conclusion about that from what you hear about a person, that deep down they do show appreciation and have that feeling, that desire to share life. So we thank God for all these gifts of Caelan this morning, for the joy he brought to his friends and families. His parting has drawn us into the mystery, the mystery of joy and the mystery of suffering, because we don't like to lose a loved one. We don't like to lose a, love, a young person, a son, a daughter, or a parent. But as Christians, we believe that Jesus is among us, that he helps us carry our crosses and our pains. Through our unity and spiritual gifts, we can continue. I'm just reading about a famous person uh, yesterday evening called Charles de Foucault. Charles was a guy who lived in France in the end of the 19th century and uh, he joined the French Foreign Legion seeking adventure. And of course he had many adventures and lived a very uh, liberal lifestyle and couldn't find contentment. But he went out to the African desert and he met some Muslims. He noted how in the Bedouin tribes they shared and they showed love to each other and they were people of God. He said he touched the mystery of God in his brothers and sisters, whom he didn't know. Even though he had walked away from his faith as a young man, he rediscovered God's presence in these people. He came back to Paris, and he started to visit churches, and he said he found the same love there, and he became a devout Christian. He became attached to the whole mystery of the Lord being present to us in the Eucharist, 
And he went back again out among the tribes and he brought the Eucharist with him as a brother, Brother Charles. And he would meet different people passing by, talk to them about God. And he said he could find God in anybody. He said God was present in everyone and he could touch that mystery in the other person. Sometimes things happen in our lives where we lose that sense of God's presence or where we doubt it. But that's more to do probably with our own inability to go right into the mystery than the fact that the presence is there. So Charles himself began to stay in different places, pray with people and write some books which are still available. He died in 1916. He was uh, murdered, actually, by some bandits who were passing through and wanted to rob him. But he knew that was always the risk. But he gives us that assurance that God is in everyone, that God is here too with us. So we pray that in the mystery of Calon's journey, when he meets the Lord, they will meet as brothers. That deep down in his heart is the mystery of the living God. And so that is our prayer this morning for Caelan, and we pray for his family as they continue this journey. We stand now and we join in our prayer of affirmation, our faith prayer, the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before the altar of God. We pray for all who are gathered here. We pray for those who carry burdens of loss or guilt or bereavement. We pray for healing. We invite those who are doing the prayers to come forward. So we pray for peace in the world. We remember the people of Gaza. We remember the people of Ukraine and the people of the United States. Lord, hear us. Lord, May we learn patience and forgiveness and accept that so many questions will not have answers. Lord, hear us. Lord, Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer pain and ill health with their families, friends, and those who care for them. We especially remember Lou Gilmartin at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May the radiance and beauty of Caelan's life never be defined by his death. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May we take all the time we need to heal the wounds nobody can see, and may we give ourselves the compassion we wish Caelan could have felt. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our deceased relatives, 
for Liam, Laura, Rosie, Packy, Mary Coughlin, and Michael and Mary. May the Lord bring them into the light of his presence. Lord, hear us. To the bigger family we have in Kilmessen and beyond, we are overwhelmed by the love and kindness you have shown our family. We know your hearts are broken for our broken hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, we remember Fidel Swan, who died recently, a member of this parish, and others too uh, recently deceased. May they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We're seated for the offertory. When leaves are falling and the branches bare, winter is calling and chills the silent air. When the moon is covered by shadows of the night, you will hear me calling if you come into the quiet. Be still, oh, be still. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> may these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, as we remember our brother Kalon, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our failings, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory, and with him called back into a new life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy... Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Oliver, Charles and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be blessed to confirm in faith and charity, your, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with her servant, Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember Caelan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, his father Liam, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away our tears, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand now and we join in unity with all those who are giving their lives in Gaza, looking after the hungry children and those who are healing wounds and bringing solace to places of conflict. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We pray for that gift of peace in our hearts, that knowing that God loves each one of us and that we are chosen, that we are precious to him. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord. <coughs> Just to say that uh, those who are not receiving communion are welcome to come for a blessing if they so wish, or just to pray for uh, everyone here in their seats.
This is my winter song to you. The storm is coming soon. It rolls out to the sea. My voice a beacon in the night. My words will be your light to carry me to you. Is love alive? Is love alive? Is love alive? They say that things just cannot grow beneath the winter snow, or so I have been told. They say we're buried far, just like a distant scar I simply cannot find. Is love alive? Is love alive? Is love alive? This is my winter song. December never fell so wrong. Cause you're not where you belong. Inside my arms. I still believe in summer days. The seasons always change and life will find a way. I'll be your harvester of light and send it out tonight so we can start again. Is love alive? Is love alive? Is love alive? This is my winter song. November never fell so wrong Cause you're not where you belong This is my winter song to you This is my winter song to you the storm is going soon, it rolls out to the sea. My love is like a beacon night, my words will be your light to carry you to me. Is love alive? Is love alive? Our love's alive. During these days, we remember those who have died in the past. It's part of our church tradition. Just uh, picked up a little hymn in the prayer of the church uh, for yesterday. Remember those, Lord, who in your peace have died, yet may not gain love's high reward, till love is purified. With you they face death's night, sealed with your victory sign. Soon may the splendour of your light on them forever shine. Sweet is their pain, yet deep, till perfect love is born. Their lone night watch they gladly keep before your radiant morn. Your love is their great joy, your will their one desire. As fine as gold without alloy, we find them in love's fire. For them we humbly pray, Perfect them in your love, or may we share eternal day with them in heaven above. Let us pray. 
May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. After the blessing and uh, the um, prayers here of commendation, um, if you wish to offer sympathies, if you're not going down to the crematorium, uh, we will uh, just uh, give a while for that. The Lord be with you. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love, so that on this life's journey you may be effective in doing good, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, and the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We pray in silence. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Calon, and assure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings of his life which you bestowed upon him. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. Shortly we will take our brother to his place of rest.